Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another art video for you. So I am showing my first book that I did in year 12 today. I took an AS level for art, that's just something that our school did. I was the last year to take AS level, so it's basically a separate qualification to A levels, but it's one above GCSE, so it sort of goes GCSE, AS levels, and then A levels. So I'm currently doing A levels, um, so I thought I would show my AS books. So today I'm showing my first book in AS levels. This is basically my coursework book, so AS's was split 50-50, so 50% was what they call coursework and 50% was the exam book and then the final exam so everything you see in this video so the book any final pieces any sort of printing pieces or stuff on anything in this video um added up to count for a total of 50% of my final AS grade so I ended up getting an A for my AS's which I was so happy with because you can't actually get a stars AS level so it's the best that I could have got so I was absolutely over the moon and yeah so the theme was light and dark so because it was coursework it's a theme that our teacher chose quite broad so you could literally do absolutely anything to do with it and find a way to link it somehow so yeah without further ado let's get into the video so my theme for the first book of my AS was called Light and Dark. So this is a topic that um, my teacher chose. So this is basically my coursework book. I've just put some post-it notes to cover up my um, centre number and candidate number. But I basically just did a title page for the front of my book to do with Light and Dark. And then inside, very similar to GCSE, I started with the title page. Um, so the title's Light and Dark and this is a biro piece. Then again, similar to GCSE, I did a inspiration page and a mind map. So I've got lots of images that link to light and dark around the outside. And then inside, I've got things that can link to light and dark. And then I've got some artist links on the flaps to the side. And I've just written about what I think about the artist images. Then I did some boxed work. Um, so this piece is acrylic paint. This is graphite pencil, oil pastel, oil paint, um, watercolour paint, colour pencil, chalk, paper cut, fine liner and water and biro and I've written on the times of how long it took me as well because I just thought it was quite interesting to see this whole page all together has taken me over 10 hours to create this whole page which is a long time just for a dub one single double page in your art book um, so yeah I just thought it was quite interesting. Then I did some observation work, so we had to do things that could link to light, so light bulbs, candles, um, things like that, so I chose to work on this um, lamp first of all from observation, um, and this is just using pencil, and then I worked from a light bulb, so this is fine liner, this is pencil, and this is biro, and I've got some artist links of artists that have done light bulbs. Then our teacher wanted us to do a jewellery studies page. So I've done a mixture of different medias on this page. I've done pencil for these three and then biro for these two and this little bit is white pen. Then I did some photography on this page um, and I've got an inspiration page of other artists images um, and I just took some photos of the stuff I was working from. Then we got asked to focus on two different artists. So I chose to focus on Picasso and Lucien Freud. I'm not quite sure how you say his last name. Um, so Picasso was the first one that I focused on. So I wrote about his blue period and then the rose period that came later. And I've got some information about him as an artist, some artist links, um, and just basically a study of him. And then I did an artist copy of this piece. So this is my recreation. I actually did it in pencil, the version in pencil's here. And then over the top, I added some acetate and I just colored it in, in Sharpies with the matching colors that is on the original. And then Lucien Freud is the other artist I focused on. So again, I've got some information about him as an artist and then lots of artist links. And then I recreated one of his images and this was using acrylic paint. Then I decided to do some printing of one of the pieces by Picasso. So this is my original lino that I did the printing from. This is the best lino print that I did because it's quite clean. And then I did some others um, on different color backgrounds. And I coloured this one in colour pencil on top to relate to the colours and just some different backgrounds here. 
Then we did a church visit and we all made um, sort of a montage page of different things from the church. So we went there and brought our books and did some drawings from observation. And then we also took some photos and worked from images. So this is a range of different media. I've got fine liner and water, um, thin fine liner pen, white pencil and white pen. Um, this was a rubbing of um, one of the gravestones. I've got fine liner pen again, pencil, biro, just bits and pieces. Then we did some church research. Um, so this is the local church near me. So I just wrote some information about it. And then I did some photography. So these images on contact sheets are just stuck on acetate. I've got some photos that I took while I was at the church. And then I've got some artist links here. And then this is a um, recreation I did using watercolour paint. Then we wrote down a final idea because this church research religion sort of topic was sort of like a mini theme um so we got asked to pick a final idea and then work towards a final piece um so i chose to work from one of the photos that i took of an angel statue and i created a big um i think it was a one size acetate piece so i painted the piece of acetate in black um paint it's a mixture of paint and ink um, and then once it's dried, you scratch into it to create the image. And these are just some pictures of my piece. Then we did some work on bugs. So we did this in one of my GCSE books as well. I think it was the wraps one. Um, so basically working from real bugs. So these were all using fine liner and water. And then I've got some inspiration page here. Then I chose to do this. I don't think many people did this but um i just wanted to do some more observation work so so um i used one of the animal skulls that my teacher had and i just drew it basically lots of times because i thought it looked cool and i thought it could look quite good in different colors and overlapping so all of these are from observation um in different color fine liners and then i've done um some over the top in black um permanent pen and overlaid it on acetate then I did a skull page. So again, all of these are from observation. Oops. This one is a continuous line drawing. This one is using my left hand. These two are unsighted. And then this one is with two pens stuck together. And this one on tracing paper was just normal, as was this one. Then I decided to do some more printing. So this is more lino printing. And I chose to work from skulls again. So this is my original lino piece. And I've just written about it here. Um, and then all of my prints are here. And I've done some here as well. Then I did some intaglio printing. I really, really like this type of printing. Because you get a really clean um, print from it. So this is the original um, piece of intaglio. And then this is the print from it. So as you can see, it comes out really crisp, the first one. The thing with Intaglio is unlike Lino, you can't then put more ink on top. So once you've done a print, like this is the best you're gonna get. And then from here on out, it's just gonna get less like good quality. So this one's not as good quality. And then this one's even worse. But the first one you get is normally really good. Then I did some polystyrene prints as well. This was super easy to do. So you just got some polystyrene. I decided to do a butterfly. So you basically just indent the bits that you don't want the, the to, that you don't want to come out the colour of ink you choose. So I wanted to use black ink. So anything that I didn't want to be black and I wanted to be kept clean, I um, indented. And these are my prints here. And I've done different backgrounds. So this, these were watercolour backgrounds. I've just written about them here. Then I did some different types of printing. So this bug one's again polystyrene. And then I did some um, printing with a glue gun here. And then I did some string printing here. And here are some pictures of what I used to work from to create my prints. Then we had to do a final piece for printing. So I chose to do lino printing because that was my favorite one. Um, so this is the lino print that I used to create my final piece. And this is the skull that I used to work from. And then this is, my, this is a picture of my final piece. My actual final piece is A1 size. Um, and it took me absolutely ages. And it's basically lots of different color paper cut up. And then I printed skulls over the top. Then we did some more life drawing. 
So we have the same model come in as at GCSE and we just basically did some charcoal drawings and some chalk drawings from the poses that he did. And then we also made some soap sculptures, um, which was quite interesting and quite different. So I've just got pictures of them down there. And the, this was working from one of the images. Then we went to the National Portrait Gallery and I've done some artist copies of some work I saw. So I copied this piece here in pencil. And then I did a recreation of this piece using white pencil. And then this is a paper cut and coffee stained underneath. And this is a copy of one of the pieces here. Then we all focused on the artist Caravaggio um, because he was a really interesting artist. If you haven't heard of him before, then give him a quick little Google. Um, he was very like expressive in his painting and there's a lot of like symbolism um, throughout his work. He's quite a dark artist um, with the lighting and sort of themes that he paints. So I've got some artist links of work that he created and some information about him there. Then I chose to recreate this image and this painting is called The Sick Bacchus. I think that's how you say it, I'm not 100% sure. Um, and I've got some other, other people's versions that they've done at the side. And then I created it using my brother, so I had the setup. I tried to make the setup as similar as possible um, and with the leaves in his hair and the, the peaches here um, and the post, so I've just got some photos there. Then I chose to focus on the artist Johan Vermeer. I'm really bad at pronouncing names so I'm sorry if any of these are wrong. So I've got some information about him and artist links again and then I recreated um, the portrait of the girl with the pearl earring, so this is using acrylic. Then I researched Rembrandt and got some artist links. Then we went on to thinking of our own personal theme of what we wanted to create for our final piece. So I've just got an inspiration page here of lots of different images that I like the look of. I wanted to focus on portraits, so I got all of these different portrait images, and then I just made this on top of my face because I thought it was fun. Then I've got a final idea page, so writing down my final idea, and then I've got some artist images. Then I did an image analysis, so I've got the artist image here and then my recreation here and each box is a different media. So we've got chalk pastels, fine liner and water, oil pastels, black biro, watercolour, acrylic paint, colour pencil, oil paint and pencil. And I've got my writing about the image here. Then I did a photo shoot, so I took some photos of my friends. Originally I had the idea of using a mirror, um, so that's why a lot of these photos were taken looking into a mirror. but. Um, I decided to change my idea. So I've got some observed pencil studies. Um, these were from my, like working for my friend Amber and then these were just from looking in a mirror. Then I tried out some different media. So this page is all watercolour. This is on canvas paper and this is just normal paper. Um, this is oil pastel and so is this. Then I did some more acrylic studies. So this is realistic colours and then this is just using different blue tones. Then I decided to do another photo shoot because I slightly changed my idea and I wanted to do something quite out there and out of the ordinary. So I, in the end, I actually made a box out of wood um, and painted a different face on each side. So six paintings in total, because it was a cube, which was quite a lot and it took me weeks and weeks and weeks to complete. Um, so these are all photos that I used. I wanted it to look like she was being sort of trapped in this box and wanting to get out so she was squashing her face against it and then i've got my final photos that i really liked testing out different backgrounds these are my final six photos that i chose to go each on one side of the cube and then i've done a layout of the cube net with the different faces on then i did some more acrylic painting so this is a copy of a piece by jenny saville and then i've got some other artist images by her then I did some different acrylic paint studies, just practicing different aspects of the pictures. And then I did this piece here. This half is in acrylic and this half is in oil because I wasn't sure what paint I wanted to use. And then I wrote about down here and here what paint I decided I wanted to use for the final thing. And in the end, I opted to use acrylic paint because I thought if I'm painting a cube, I need the faces to dry really quick. Otherwise, I can't do all the faces and oil takes a long time to dry so acrylic paint was definitely the best for this idea. Then I've done a practice painting just on a little bit of wood 
I decided to use um, this sort of MDF board stuff instead. I've written about it here, but basically I tried out painting on this type of wood and it didn't work very well because it had lots of um, splintery bits in it and it just didn't look that good. So then I um, tried painting on MDF and this is what it is here and it worked a lot better. So underneath the painting, I basically split it up into nine different sections because I needed to put some sort of cover over it before I started painting because I didn't want the paint to just seep through. So I tested out this stuff called gesso and then also PVA glue um, to see what would be best underneath the cube. And I decided to use three coats of um, gesso in preparation which took a long time because I had to paint all six sides three times so it took a long time but it was definitely worth it because um it just it sealed it so the paint wouldn't sink into the MDF then I've got some pictures of my stages of painting and then my evaluation with my final photos of my piece and these are the six different faces. So I decided to put a hook in one of the corners of my piece so I could hang it up from the ceiling. So you can see that here and I'll pop a little video in in a minute. And that is everything. So that is my whole book one for AS level. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up as always. And remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.